Hello, folks. Today, we're tackling a big issue that's going to hit us all right where it hurts. The wallet. That's right. We're talking about the skyrocketing food prices that are coming our way. Now listen, I've heard through the grapevine, and it's pretty reliable, that prices for things like bread, milk, and eggs might just double next month. Can you believe that? Now, why is this happening? Well, let me tell you. It's not just about bad weather or tough growing conditions. No, sir. It's about some folks making decisions that don't always look out for the little guy. Decisions like trade policies that aren't in our best interests or mismanaging supplies. It's like they're playing a game of Monopoly with our food supply. But here's the kicker. What does this mean for you and your family? It means tightening that belt even more. But fear not, because as skilled preppers and smart patriots, we've faced challenges before. So what's our move? We start growing some of our food, we buy in bulk, look for those local deals, and maybe even barter with our neighbors. Community strength, my friends, that's our ace. So, let's get ready. Let's stay informed, and let's show them that we can outsmart their game. Number one, potatoes. Folks, brace yourselves. Potatoes are about to become a precious commodity. Why, you ask? Well, our beloved spuds are under siege from two major threats pesky insects, and wild weather. These little critters, like the notorious Colorado potato beetle, are chomping through our potato fields like there's no tomorrow, wreaking havoc on our crops. And it doesn't stop there. Weather's been no friend either. We're talking about too much rain, or maybe none at all, and even frost hitting when it shouldn't. All this chaos stunts our potatoes, leading to fewer and smaller tubers. Now here's the real deal. These challenges mean we're looking at some serious price hikes. Potatoes could cost double, if not more, very soon. This isn't just about paying more at the store. It's about a staple of our diet becoming harder to afford. So, what do we do? We adapt. Maybe it's time to start growing some potatoes in our backyards, folks. Moreover, the fallout from these skyrocketing potato prices isn't just about how much more you and I will pay at the checkout. It's a ripple effect that touches every corner of the agricultural sector. Our hardworking farmers are in the trenches, fighting against these reduced yields and sky-high costs that come with battling pests and safeguarding crops against Mother Nature's mood swings. It's not just about more pesticides or frost covers, it's about their livelihood, then you've got the processors and distributors. These folks are scrambling to find enough quality spuds to keep up with our fries and mashed potato demands. This could lead to some serious hiccups in our supply chain, folks. Imagine walking into a store and finding the potato shelves as empty as a promise from the swamp in D.C. So, what's our game plan? Well, it's time for us to rethink how we shop and eat. Maybe we swap some of those potatoes on our plates for other carbs like rice or pasta. But more importantly... Let's rally behind our local potato growers. Buying local not only supports our neighbors, but also cuts down on those long supply chains that are all tangled up right now. Number two, cheese. All right, cheese lovers, buckle up because we're heading into a storm that's brewing in the cheese industry. We're talking about a trifecta of troubles, milk shortages, labor shortages, and sky-high transportation costs. Now, why is milk scarce? It's a mix of changing herd sizes, the natural ups and downs of milk production throughout the seasons, and folks shifting their diet preferences. But that's not all. The cheese-making process is like a fine art, needing skilled hands every step of the way, from the initial crafting to the careful aging. With fewer of these skilled workers around, our beloved cheese can't be produced efficiently, which means production slows down and costs go up. And let's not forget about those transportation woes, whether it's fuel prices soaring or just plain logistical headaches, getting the cheese from the farm to your table is costing more and more. What does this all mean for you, the cheese aficionado? Expect to see those prices climbing. The less milk there is, the less cheese gets made. Throw in labor challenges and transport costs and you've got a recipe for some pricey cheddar. So next time you're at the store, you might notice your favorite cheeses hitting your wallet harder. Furthermore, the impact of soaring cheese prices ripples through the entire supply chain, touching everyone from the dairy farmers to the folks running your local grocery store. 
every link in this chain feels the squeeze of increasing costs, underscoring just how connected and dependent these sectors are on each other. And what happens? As prices climb, consumers start to change their habits. Some might switch to cheaper alternatives, while others might cut down on cheese altogether to keep their budgets in check. For those making the cheese, it's time to get creative and strategic. Cheese producers could streamline their operations to cut costs or renegotiate deals to make transporting their goods less expensive. They might even look beyond their usual suppliers to keep costs down and production up. As for us, the cheese lovers, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve too. Maybe it's time to give those lesser known, maybe less expensive cheese varieties a try. There's a whole world of flavors out there waiting to be explored. Or perhaps we consider buying our favorite cheeses in bulk when the prices are right, storing them properly to extend their shelf life. Number three, milk. Folks, the dairy industry is hitting some serious bumps in the road, mainly due to labor shortages and skyrocketing operational costs. It's getting tougher and tougher to find skilled workers who know how to properly care for the herds and keep the farms running smoothly. On top of that, everything from animal feed to energy is costing more these days, and these rising costs are putting a real strain on dairy production. What does this mean for us, the consumers? Well, brace yourselves. Milk prices could shoot up by 100% or even more pretty soon. This steep increase is directly tied to the challenges dairy farms are facing in keeping up production amidst these hurdles. Dairy farming isn't just about milking cows. It requires a specialized set of skills and a lot of hard work, making the impact of labor shortages all the more severe. Additionally, factors like extreme weather have been messing with crop yields, which bumps up the cost of animal feed. Plus, with transportation costs on the rise, all these expenses are adding up fast for dairy farmers. And unfortunately, these costs will trickle down to us as higher prices at the store as producers try to balance their books. So what can we do? It might be time to look at how we consume milk. Whether it's considering plant-based alternatives that might be cheaper or just using milk more sparingly, we need to adapt. Moreover, the tug of war between supply and demand is only making things tougher. As dairy farms labor to meet the growing appetite for milk and dairy products, the limited availability is pushing prices even higher. Imagine more people chasing after fewer gallons of milk. It's a recipe for price hikes. In response to these looming increases, it's crucial for us as consumers to rethink how we manage our grocery budgets. It might be wise to start exploring alternative dairy options, maybe those soy or almond milks, or even considering other sources of calcium and protein to diversify our diets. Bulk buying could also be a smart move. Grabbing larger quantities at lower prices can really help manage costs over time. As we navigate these changes, staying informed and making savvy shopping choices will be key. Let's keep our eyes on the market trends, adjust our buying habits, and continue to support our local dairy farmers when possible. This way, we can weather the storm of rising milk prices together, ensuring our fridges and wallets don't feel the pinch too severely. Number four, pasta. Get ready, pasta lovers, because we're facing a perfect storm that's set to make our favorite spaghetti and macaroni dishes a bit pricier. The main culprit? Skyrocketing wheat prices. Wheat is the backbone of pasta, and when its price jumps, so does the cost of making all those delicious pasta shapes we love. This spike is due to a mix of nasty weather hitting crop yields, a growing demand for wheat-based products, and logistical nightmares that slow down wheat transport from fields to factories. But the plot thickens with ongoing disruptions in the supply chain. We're talking about everything from delayed shipments to not having enough hands on deck, which makes it even harder for pasta manufacturers to keep up with production demands efficiently. As these costs pile up and production snags persist, don't be surprised if you see pasta prices doubling or more in the near future. This price jump is a direct pass-through from the higher costs of raw materials, and with ongoing supply chain issues, we might also see pasta becoming harder to find on the shelves at times. Moreover, the spike in pasta prices isn't just a matter of stretching household budgets, it's also about food security and overall affordability. Pasta isn't just another item on the grocery list. For many around the world, it's a dietary staple, essential for daily nourishment. So, when pasta prices soar, 
it can hit the hardest for those in vulnerable communities, deepening food insecurity and widening socioeconomic gaps. In facing these challenges, consumers might need to think outside the box, Exploring alternative carbohydrate sources like rice, potatoes, or even lesser-known grains could be smart moves. Making pasta at home might also emerge as a budget-friendly alternative, giving folks control over what goes into their food and how much it costs. Supporting local pasta producers and pushing for sustainable farming are more than just good deeds. They're steps toward building a more resilient food system. These actions can help cushion against supply chain hiccups and reduce the wild swings in food prices. By advocating for and adopting sustainable practices, we can help ensure that our food supply remains stable and affordable, not just for ourselves, but for communities worldwide. Number five, apples. Attention, apple enthusiasts. We're facing a crunch in the apple market and not the good kind. Extreme weather events like frost and hailstorms have dealt a harsh blow to apple orchards, slashing harvests significantly. These severe conditions haven't just bruised the fruit, they've wreaked havoc on the trees themselves, drastically reducing the supply of apples we usually enjoy. This means we're likely to see apple prices climb as the available stock struggles to meet demand. But the troubles don't end there. The damage from these weather events could linger, affecting not just this year's harvest, but also future ones. Frost and hail can harm the health and productivity of apple trees, meaning the impact could be felt for several seasons. Furthermore, apple growers are under financial pressure from the loss of crops. The costs for repairs, replanting, and putting measures in place to protect against future weather catastrophes are steep and, sadly, those costs are often passed down to us, the consumers. In light of these challenges, it might be wise to consider some strategies to mitigate the impact on our wallets. Exploring local apple varieties that might not be as affected by global supply issues, or even supporting community-supported agriculture, CSA programs, where you can get fresh produce directly from farmers, could be smart moves. Also, preserving apples through methods like canning or freezing when prices are lower can ensure you have a steady supply throughout the year. Indeed, the geographical spread of apple orchards significantly influences the supply dynamics and price shifts. Regions that heavily depend on apple cultivation are particularly vulnerable. When adverse weather strikes these areas, it doesn't just affect local availability. It can send shockwaves through the broader market, potentially hiking prices even further. Given these challenges, it might be necessary for us as consumers to rethink our apple purchasing strategies. Switching to preserved or frozen apples can be a savvy move, allowing us to enjoy the taste and nutritional benefits of apples without the fresh price tag. These alternatives not only last longer but can also be more cost-effective, especially during times of scarcity. The repeated hits of extreme weather on apple production highlight just how susceptible our agricultural systems are to climate-related disruptions. This situation is a wake-up call for all of us to take proactive steps toward greater food resilience. Diversifying our diets and supporting local agriculture aren't just good for our health and wallets. They're essential strategies for bolstering our food security and ensuring that we can face these challenges head-on. Number 6. Chicken Eggs Attention, egg lovers. We're facing a serious scramble in the egg market due to avian flu outbreaks that have decimated poultry flocks across the country. Avian flu, a highly infectious influenza virus that targets birds, has led to drastic measures, mass culling of infected flocks to halt the spread of the disease and protect public health. This unfortunate response has a direct impact on egg production. With so many birds culled to combat the spread, our egg supply has taken a significant hit. Eggs, as you know, are a staple in kitchens everywhere, not just for their nutritional value, but for their versatility in cooking. This reduction in supply is putting pressure on the remaining stocks, and as a result, we're likely looking at a sharp rise in egg prices in the near future. Given the essential role eggs play in our diets and the culinary world, this shortage could make eggs a luxury item in the short term. To navigate this spike in prices, you might want to explore alternative protein sources or even consider using egg substitutes in your cooking and baking. Options like plant-based egg alternatives or other protein-rich foods could help you manage your grocery budget more effectively. 
The ripple effects of rising egg prices due to avian flu outbreaks reach far beyond individual grocery bills. Industries like bakeries, restaurants, and food manufacturers that rely heavily on eggs are grappling with not just increased costs, but also potential shortages that could hamper their ability to produce goods and serve customers effectively. This situation could lead to reduced margins and force businesses to either raise their prices or cut back on production, choices that could have broader economic consequences. For consumers, adapting dietary habits might become necessary. Exploring alternative protein sources such as legumes, nuts, and seeds, or using egg substitutes in recipes can help manage household budgets more efficiently and maintain nutritional intake without over-reliance on eggs. On the industry and regulatory side, enhancing biosecurity measures at poultry farms becomes paramount to prevent future outbreaks. This includes stricter controls on farm access, improved sanitation, and vigilant monitoring of poultry health. Stakeholders across the poultry industry must work closely to bolster defenses against avian flu and mitigate its spread. Government agencies and public health organizations have a critical role to play as well. Their efforts in monitoring avian flu incidents, enforcing stringent biosecurity regulations, and supporting the poultry industry through research and guidance are essential. These measures not only aim to control the disease, but also support the recovery of poultry populations and stabilize egg production. Collective actions like these are crucial for navigating the challenges posed by avian flu, ensuring the stability of egg supplies, and safeguarding the interests of both producers and consumers in the long term. Number seven, olive oil. The olive oil industry is currently facing significant challenges due to adverse weather conditions and geopolitical tensions in key producing regions. Droughts and unexpected frosts have severely affected olive groves, particularly in Mediterranean countries, which are among the largest producers of olive oil. These extreme weather events have led to lower yields and poorer quality of olives, which in turn reduces the volume of oil produced. Furthermore, Geopolitical tensions in some producing regions disrupt the supply chains and increase the costs of production and distribution. This combination of reduced supply and higher operational costs is likely to lead to a noticeable increase in olive oil prices in the near future. Consumers might soon see the impact of these factors on store shelves, with fewer options available and higher prices for what is available. In response, consumers may need to adjust their purchasing habits perhaps opting for alternative oils or reducing their overall consumption of olive oil. The industry may also need to explore new growing areas or improve irrigation and cultivation techniques to combat the effects of adverse weather and ensure a more stable supply in the future. 